Hi everyone! Welcome to another Ashtown Creations tutorial. My name is Stephanie and in today's video we are making the Beachcomber Clutch by Needle and Anchor Patterns. This is a cute little clutch that features a wrist strap and an internal zipper pocket. So the fabrics that I used on this bag are quilting cotton that I bought a few years ago from Walmart, some faux leather that I got from um, Bodio Fabrics, zipper tape from Blue Cala, and the lining is a ripstop nylon taffeta that I bought from Fabricland's online store Fabricville. Um, I bought that a this a while ago but it looks like they still have it available. So I will link all of the information I can in the description box below. I will also provide timestamps for this video so that you can jump to whatever section you need. Um, if, you if you like this video please give it a thumbs up um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you'll find out when I put out new content. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I will do my best to answer them as soon as possible. Thank you again to Carissa from Needle and Anchor Patterns for allowing me to record this tutorial for you. All right, let's get sewing. All right, let's get sewing gotta be something in there. Come on. All right, let's go through the pieces for this beachcomber clutch. So I have two exterior centers, both of them done in a quilting cotton interfaced with a woven interfacing. I have two of each of the left and the right side contrast pieces, all of them done in quilting cotton interfaced with a woven interfacing. I have two top bands. These are done in a dark navy blue faux leather. I have two lining pieces. These are actually done in a uh, ripstop nylon. I have um, two foam pieces that will be attached to the um, exterior once it's been all put together. I have a connector tab that was quilting cotton with a woven interfacing and I have this is a wristlet strap and it's uh, out of that faux, uh, faux leather. I've already marked the center and I've put some double-sided tape on and I also have two pieces of quilting cotton interfaced with woven interfacing for the interior zipper pocket. I also have two so I have some zipper tape too. This is the top zipper. This is the interior zipper. I have two zipper pulls to go with that. I have a 5 8 inch um, swivel clasp and a 5 8 inch 5 8 of an inch D ring. I also have a zipper tab and my Ashtown Creations cork label. And that looks to be all of the pieces, so let's get started sewing this beachcomber clutch. Alright, the first step we need to do um, is attach the side contrast panels to the center panels. So I'm going to take one at a time, put one of these off at the side. I'm going to, they want, we want to end up with them like this. So setting them up like this, Take it, flip it over so that right sides are together and line up this edge, the long edge here and these short edges there. So just like this, do the same for the other side. So we want it to finish like that. So putting them together right sides up, then flip this corner piece over right sides together, matching the long edges and clipping those into place. Do the same for the other side. And now we're going to stitch along this long edge with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So do that for all four of the corners and then we'll move on. So we're going to end up, it's going to end up 3 8 so it'll be about here. So we want to actually go from that corner to that corner. It should be 3 8 if it's all cut right. So joining stitch, needle down. I've got mine on a three and a half. So 
So now we want to press the seams open and top stitch on either side. So we want to press them open, butterfly them. You can use a, um, an iron if you want to. I'm just going to finger press. And then we're going to stitch at an eighth of an inch away from this seam here with a top stitch and my top stitch is five. So And I'm going to go over all of the, do this, and then I'll flip one of these open and do that. So I'm going to chain stitch them. But what I am doing is going up one side, and then I'll go the other side so that we have uh, double stitching, one on either side. That will hold this seam open. if you can see it but there's top stitching on either side of the seam so your seam should look like this and like that on the back and keep going and do all four all four corners go that's both sides are now um, top stitch on other sides of the seams we're going to take the top band now and I'm going to put it right sides together across the top and match up match up the long sides and clip it And the same for the other side. So right sides together along the long edge, centering it as best as possible. All right, and we're going to stitch this on at um, a three eighths inch seam allowance. So moving it back to three and a half stitch length. trim up your threads and now we're going to open this seam so butterfly this seam and then top stitch along both sides so on the top end and on this main piece so I'm going to um, butterfly the seam right there I'm going to put it down so I've already changed it to a number five so top stitch length eighth of an inch from the edge and as I go along, I'm going to be holding the seam flat with my thumb if I can. And if when we get to these joins, it might be a little thick, so I might have to lift it up and readjust. So I'm going to top stitch both sides of the this seam on both pieces. And there we go. We have both pieces now all top stitched and ready to move on to the next step. All right, for the next step, we want to attach the foam to the completed exterior panel. So I have already gone ahead and I've marked centers on my foam piece. Now I'm going to fold my exterior pieces right sides together, trying to match up this seam line and that seam line and then I am going to put cut a snip out so this way I can actually see pretty easily where the center of that 
this piece is. So go ahead and do this for top and bottom and for the other piece. Now we want to take a, one of the foam pieces. Actually, before I put the foam piece on, I want to measure down, down three eighths of an inch and put a mark. We don't want our foam in our seam allowance. So I am marking three eighths of an inch down and it should be three eighths of an inch all the way around if I cut everything right, but I just want to make sure it's definitely not in my zipper. My top seam is where I'm going to have my zipper. So if I put it there centered, yeah, we, we're clear on the bottom as well. So I don't have, mine is not fusible. So I am going to take some, I'm going to take some Fabri-Tac glue and I am going to um, glue this on. You can um, put this down and then fuse another piece of woven interfacing on top of it, but I don't want mine to be quite that thick. So I'm going to put a bead of glue all the way around the outside. And then just a little bit through the center. Most of it will be come around the side. Hopefully that's enough to hold it. And then match up the centers and this center snip along this line. And then press it down. try and get it pretty even. Let's see, mine's pretty even. And you can also take double-sided tape. I don't have any at my machine with me. You can also take double-sided tape, put tape in the center and use tape to hold it on. Um, as I mentioned, I don't have tape at my machine with me at the moment. So I'm just going to do it this way. All right, go ahead and do the second piece. We want all the fabric to lie flat. So if your fabric isn't lying flat, pull it up and smooth it out. There. Pretty good. So now we're going to do the other piece. I've already snipped the centers. Draw the three eighths. Before we move on to the next step, I wanted to say if you do have fusible foam, you can, instead of gluing it on, you can actually fuse it on. Uh, mine isn't fusible, so that is why I, I used glue. So I've also, that's done, I'm going to set it aside. I've also gone and I've marked my center and down about an inch and a half, and I have put my name tag on. I've stitched it through already. All right, now we're moving on to the next step. For this next step, we are going to be preparing the connector tab. So I've got my connector tab piece and I've already marked a line down the center. I'm going to want to um, fold the long sides into the center line, um, leaving a little bit of a gap on either side. So since I'm using quilting cotton, I am going to use an iron. If you have decided to do your connector tab with a faux leather or a cork, you can use your double-sided tape down the center, fold each side in just like we would a wrist strap, a handle, crossbody strap, all that. So I'm going to fold it into the center and use my iron with steam to press that down. Other side.
There we go. And then one more fold in the insides. We're going to fold them together one more time on itself. So there we go. Now I'm going to iron it again. All right, there we go, tab connector. Now I'm going to top stitch along each of the long sides, probably the long side and across one and then up the other side with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So my top stitch length of five and here we go. Make sure it's centered. And I, I start with the open side. A lot of times when you're, when you're doing the fold over, making a connector tab or a strap or something, you want to close the open side first, because then when you go to close, when you go to, sorry, you want to top stitch the open side first, that'll close it off. And then any extra will go into the side and it'll keep it even. If you stitch on the, the fold side first, this side could end up being not matched up. So we want to make sure that the open side is matched. We stitch that one first and then it will be kept closed and kept in line for the, um, when we go up the other side. And there we go. One connector tab all done and we're ready to move on to the next step. All right, in this next step, we will be adding the zipper pocket. Now I've gone ahead with my um, zipper pocket piece and I've marked it out mostly based on the instructions. The only difference is my zipper box is half an inch because I'm using number five zipper tape. The pattern calls for a number three zipper. I didn't have one that matched properly, so I've chosen to use a number five. So the pattern, if you're using a three, would use a three eighths inch opening. I'm using a half inch, but otherwise everything else is the same. So I've marked it out, marked my centers. So I folded it in half to get the center of the piece. And I folded this one in half and snipped the centers. And I've also marked, it's on there, but I'm going to have to get it, my ruler out again. So, and then I'm going to measure down and center the pocket piece on the lining piece. So right sides are together, matching the centers and placing it down as per the instructions in the pattern. So now I'm going to stitch both sides of the zipper box. I am not gonna stitch the short ends. So I'm going to put it down on one side, needle down in one corner and I'm going to change it to a three and a half stitch length because that is the joining stitch. And I am going to back stitch at the start and end, and then move, skip over and go to the back stitch and back stitch. I'm gonna trim my threads. and I'm going to trim my jump stitch. And actually I'm just going to singe these to make sure that they do, make sure that they don't pull through when we're moving the uh, or pulling through the zipper pocket. All right, so now we want to we need to cut down the center. So I'm going to get started. I'm going to cut down in one direction until we're getting close to the end, half inch or more away from the end. And then we're going to snip, actually grab my other scissors, see if these will work. And now I'm going to snip on an angle into the corner without snipping my stitches as close as I can without snipping my stitches. So I'm going to go in this direction as well. And the same here. So we've got it 
cut out. Now I'm going to combination finger press and I may end up using the iron although this this uh, rip stop nylon doesn't want to press very well so I have to be very careful. So I'm going to press it this way, that way, pull it through to the back like this and then work on pressing the seams even so that the back I'd rather not have the lining piece showing but if it shows a little bit it's not not horrible but I'm hoping we can do this without the iron so far so good roll it between your fingers There we go. If you need to take something hard and scrape it to help get that crease in. Don't press too hard because you don't want to wreck your fabric. But there we go. Now I need to take the smaller of the zips and still get a little puckering. It's probably because I didn't cut close enough to the corner. I just don't want to clip my stitches. So now I've got my, give this some more steam. Right, so now I'm taking my interior zipper. I'm going to pop the zipper on. Now when I had it closed I'm pretty sure this one was the first coil then over to the second third so I'm going to try and have it go into the zipper pull the same way. Starting with one slightly higher up than the other. Let's see. Get it on and there we go. So this should be even so it's not bulging on one side more than the other. So I'm going to put it in the center of the, of the zipper I'm going to bring this around to the back and try and put it even across. You can use tape if you need to. If you want to use double sided tape you can. Um, I'm not going to for this one. So I'm going to now put it under the needle starting. So the zipper closes this way. I'm going to start down from the zipper and come around then move the zipper slider to the sp spot I've already stitched and then continue around the other side of the zipper. So I'm going to <laughs> try and get it pretty even. So I'm going to put it there down from the zipper needle in I'm going to stitch with a top stitch length of five I'm leaving my threads long because I'll most likely pull them to the back and tie them off and now that the and now that I've stitched almost up to the zipper pull I'm going to raise my foot slide it to the other end and continue on around the zipper pull the threads to the back so I'm just using my tweezers pulling on the thread and then hold them away from where I'm stitching And now I'm going to go and then pull it out. I just went over the first stitch so that I I just went over the first stitch again but I'm going to leave the tails long and I'm going to pull it all towards the back if I can figure out there it is. All the threads are now to the back. I am going to 
tie it in a knot and then I cut it off and then I'm going to singe it with the um, lighter. All right now we're going to take the other piece, the other uh, zipper lining piece, put them right sides together and match up across the top and the sides. And then I'm going to clip it on. Actually, clip it this way. I'm going to flip it over, pull the, the lining panel out of the way, and stitch around three sides of the zipper. I'm going to do th the top and the two sides. We're going to leave this open so that we can pull it through. So I'm going to fold it up a little bit. This will help with the finishing it at the end. And I'm going to, oops, lose my thread. So I'm going to fold up the end. This will help us with the turning through at the end and I'm going to stitch around with a quarter of an inch seam allowance on a three and a half stitch length. I'm going to get close to the bottom I'm going to fold up the other side and back stitch. Now we've got a pocket that if we, when we pop these out, it will fold over and it will help me to press this. It's not, it's, I didn't fuse the uh, interfacing well enough, so it's coming apart. So I'm going to fold this over, pop it, and now I'm going to take the iron to it and press it open. So when we go to close it up, we will have a nice clean edge to stitch along. Ow. That's hot. All right, there we go. That's the zippered pocket. Now on to the next step. Now we're on to the zipper prep. So I've got my zipper tape. And I'm going to measure in from one end, five eighths of an inch, and put a mark. And there we go, there's the mark there. And now I want to separate the zip at that top at the top part where we've got the mark. I'm going to, on that line that I drew, I'm going to pinch it which will pull the zipper teeth to the, in this case, the right side, to the X outside of the zipper. And then we match up the line that we pinched with the bottom of the zipper of the coil. And we're, we're making them 90, 90 degrees. So again, I've got the line here. I'm going to pinch it. When I pinch it, it makes the zipper teeth go to the outside of the zipper. And then I line up the line that I pinched with the bottom of the zipper, of the coils. And then I take a pin and put the pin in. So now I'm going to stitch it just along. I want to catch this piece here. I wanna make sure that it stays down like that. So I'm going to put my needle down. I'm gonna hand crank a few stitches and then I'll stitch up and back a couple times and then take it out, do the same for the other side. So basically I am tacking down the uh, 90 degree turn. So put it under the needle and this is eighth of an inch at the most. So hand crank it a couple just to make sure it's there. I'm going to take my pin out. I'm going to use my tweezers to help push. And then back stitch. And there we go. Okay. 
We don't want to get these too far out. The reason I said eighth of an inch at the most is because we don't want these showing on the outside of the bag or we're going to have to take them out. So again, eighth of an inch right at the edge, needle down, a couple hand cranks. Foot up, take the pin out. You can use a stiletto for this. I just have my tweezers on top of my machine. So they're handy. And trim it off. All right, I've gone ahead and I've added my zipper pull because I got my teeth, see this? 90 degrees isn't quite 90 degrees. I wanted to try and keep this as even as possible. So, because we were supposed to have the zipper be a certain length and the, in, the length is actually mentioned in the instructions, in the pattern itself. So I've gone ahead and I've measured from this end down and I have to take off some. I've put a line, you probably can't see the dark line, but the dark line is right underneath this white line. I m marked the white lines before I realized that these ends didn't match up. So anyways, I'm going to cut it off, the zipper off, at that mark, toss that out, going to melt the ends of the zipper, and now I am going to add the, so I have, I have decided that I'm going to use uh, faux leather for my zipper tab. If you use, um, if you follow the instructions, it'll be a fabric zipper tab and um, there's, the instructions are in there. I, mine is going to be a little different than the instructions because I'm using faux leather. So faux leather, you want to make sure that you've got a nice clean edge. So clean up any extra frays that you see, melt off any extra you don't really want it fraying once you're done. All right, I have cut mine at seven eighths of an inch. I usually do three quarters, but um, I, I've had problems keeping the uh, the needle at catching all of the zipper. So I decided this time I'm going to use seven eighths, see if that helps any. So I'm going to put, we're going to stitch it at about an eighth of an inch from the not from the fold side, but from where the, the open side is. So I'm going to put it under my needle. Do a couple stitches. And I'm going to put in the zipper. The end that is not finished, I'll put it in this zipper tab and close this over. back stitch once I get onto the tape and hold it with the, I use the butt end of my uh, tweezers to help push the um, zipper teeth under the, under the foot because it wants to push away. So then I'm, yep, yeah, so I'll stitch all the way across. One more back stitch and then we're done. trim the threads and now I'm going to trim the tab piece down to the width of the zipper tape and I'm also going to melt any threads try and keep them from coming in so there we go we have one zipper done and so we only have the one zipper on the top we've done the interior zipper now it's time to Prepare the pieces to attach the zipper to the exterior. And so in the pattern, the um, it has gives you measurements to mark in from either side, and you're supposed to put your zipper in between those marks. I prefer, because sometimes I get the length wrong, even though I've measured it, sometimes I get it wrong, I prefer to find the centers, which I've already done for my exterior pieces, for all of my pieces. Um, find the centers on all of the pieces and 
then find the centers on my zipper. So I have a thread zap. It needs a new battery, so this may take a little bit. So I, I'm melting it because I don't want it to fray. So I'm melting it in, marking that side, putting a mark on the other side, finding the center. There we go. So I've got that and one on this side too just to be sure because I just pulled that apart. There we go. Okay, so I know the center of my zipper. This is the front of my bag and I want my bag to open with the zipper on the left hand side. So I want it open left to right. So I'm going to put my zipper face down on the exterior, matching up the center marks and clip. I'm actually going to open it And clip along out one side and then out the other, making sure that the centers stay in the center. Moved a little. The zipper slider is heavy, so it wants to pull. All right, there we go. I'm going to baste the zipper on. I like to baste it on. That makes sure that it doesn't move on me when I'm trying to do the zipper sandwich. So. At. I'm going to base stitch. I'm going to use a five stitch length. It's usually basting is supposed to be a longer stitch length. I'm going to start just where the zipper is and end where the zipper tab is. Eighth of an inch all the way along. All right now I am going to take my lining piece. I haven't found the center for that so I will find the center now. And snip when you snip, make sure you snip within the seam allowance because you don't want to have a hole in the bag. All right, so now I'm going to put, I've got my exterior face up, move the zipper out of the way, and I'm going to put my lining face down. So I've got my exterior face up, my zipper face up, and now my lining face is down. I'm gonna start clipping in the center and then move out to either side. They really should match up on the sides, but sometimes things um, stretch or move on you. So. so anyways, I'm going to try and stitch this on. It says to sew with a 3 8 seam, inch seam allowance. Um, I'm lucky if I can get a scant quarter inch. So I will do my best without switching to my zipper foot. If you want to get closer to your zipper teeth, then you'll need to put a zipper foot on. I'm not going to. I'm just going to do it the way I normally do. Needle down, three and a half. So adjoining stitch length, back stitch. Move the zipper pull. Trim threads. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to push, put it down so that the um, exterior is on the top. Seam allowance is to the outside. Now I'm going to just flip the exterior over. So I'm going to top stitch on the exterior. So I want the seam allowance to go the same direction as the exterior. So now I'm going to put my needle down. I'm going to do at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, a top stitch all the way along, making sure that the seam allowance stays going towards the exterior. And now do the same for the other side.
And there we go. Both sides have been attached, the insides, and now we're ready to move on to the next step. All right, in this next step, we attach the the connector to the bag. So my, I was supposed to have a 5 8 inch. I thought this was 5 8 It's not. It's um, 3 quarter inch. So what I've done is I've put a hole and put a rivet in to try and hold it. Now, I'm not going to be able to put this sticking out as far from the edge as it says in the pattern. So I, mine, mine will, my tab will be sticking out more than it's supposed to on the outside of the bag. But this way I can um, keep this D-ring from twisting around and I can uh, still close up the bag. So I have to make sure that my, my little uh, rivet is is at minimum because we have to close this with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So I'm going to mark it about a half inch away from the rivet. So this is extra. I'm doing this because I didn't have the right size hardware. Make sure that you've got the right size hardware and then you won't have this problem. You can just follow the instructions. So anyways, I am yeah marking it down about half an inch from the the rivet. I am hoping that gives me more than enough space to stitch past without stitching my rivet. And then I am going to place this down centered. I'm going to center it on because I want it on the side where we close. So I've made sure that my lining is out of the way. I only want to stitch it onto the exterior and I'm going to line center it on the top band with this line as close to the edge as possible. And then I'm going to stitch that on at that line. Back and forth a couple times to tack it onto the side of the bag. That's right on the edge. That's not going to hold very much so I'm going to actually go oops go in a little further and stitch in a little further because I only caught a tiny little bit of the bag that can pull out even though we are going to be stitching around it I want to make sure this connector is in and I don't want it to pull out so I'd rather do two lines of stitches than have it pull out On to the next step. All right, we're now up to the step where we close the bag to all up. So I'm going to start by matching these seams. I would like to match the ones right at the top and the top band, where the top band meets the side, and where the side pieces meet. So I'm going to start clipping here. And then I'm going to move over to the other side and do the same thing. I'm going to open my zipper, my center, my main zipper, and I'm also going to open my zippered pocket zipper. So matching up those top band seams, and matching up the side seams and a few more all the way around the exterior. And now moving on to the lining. We're supposed to leave a hole in the bottom of the lining. So I'm going to leave, it says five inches, but I think I'm going to leave one, two, six. I think I'm going to leave six just to be on the safe side. Uh, approximately. So there we go. We're going to pull it through here, but then we're going to close this up through the lining. So I'm going to add a few more clips around the sides. 
match up the center center snips. We're going to want to match them up anyways because we want to make sure that they're okay for when we close the bag. It would lined up, I guess, for when we close the bag. And now I'm going to start on this side, I'm going to stitch in and then from this end, a 90 degree turn, and then I'm going to do half inch on the bottom and moving to three eighths of an inch when we get to the exterior. So half inch seam allowance for the lining. And I'm gonna make sure it's a three and a half stitch length. Now gradually move down from a half inch to three eighths as we get closer to um, the exterior where the zipper is. There I'm at three eighths. And I obviously didn't center my piece very well because I'm stitching on it in some spots. to take it slowly when I come up to this um, connector because I don't want to hit my um, rivet. Pretty sure I'm okay. And now I want it up to gradually go up to a half an inch. going to grab my um, pinking shears and I'm going I'm not going to cut my um, connector but I'm going to use the pinking shears around the curves I can use other scissors on the straights but these help with curves and we don't want to snip our stitches on our 90 degrees at the bottom and then use my regular scissors for the this other part. And again, avoiding my connector. All right, and on to the next step. All right, now it's time to turn our wristlet right side out. So I've got my zippers most of the way open. I'm going to open it all the way. Reach in to the other side and grab the other end, foam and everything, and start pulling the exterior into the lining. Now pull it out the hole in the bottom. your hand in and run your fingers along along the seams trying to push out those edges we did a pretty good job matching up mostly matched and if you foam is not adhering like mine I'm just pushing it back down into place hopefully it will stay and now that we've got it turned right side out There we go. Now I'm going to work on these corners. All right, now we're going to, the next step, we're going to close the lining. So to close the lining, we want to pull the zipper pocket right out, reach in 
and grab the lining and pull it through the pocket. Make sure to line up your snips and pull it as straight as possible. I am going to put a couple clips in so that it stays so that it stays lined up because I find this um, what is it rip uh, ripstop the ripstop nylon it's kind of slippery so all right now we're going to stitch across from where we turned on either side all the way across half inch seam allowance to close up the bottom so actually I'm going to start a couple of stitches back from that and back stitch and all the way across. And now we can trim off the excess. And it doesn't matter now if we trim our 90 degree stitches or not, we've already pulled the bag through. Tuck the lining back inside the bag. Grab the zipper pocket, pull it out to either side. Make the uh, finished edges line up nicely. And I'm going to clip again, clip across. There's a, not a lot of weight, not like a big bag, but there's enough weight that it will pull off the side of my table. So I will clip this just to try and keep it as even as possible while we close up the zipper pocket. Top stitching. We'll stitch it at an eighth of an inch. I'm actually gonna use a three and a half stitch length just to make sure it stays closed. Gonna singe the threads, melt them down so that they're not sticking out. And now I can push the pocket back into the bag. Right. Now we can do up the pocket. There we go. The only thing left we have to do is make the wrist strap and attach it on. All right, we're on to making up the wrist strap. So as I mentioned in the reviewing of the pieces, I've already marked the center and I've already put my double-sided tape on. So now I'm going to peel off the paper from the double-sided tape and I am going to uh, well, I'm going to fold it in. I was supposed to wait. I'm going to fold it in to the center. I have left space on the ends. So hopefully this works this way. I was supposed to put my swivel hook on first, but I didn't. So we'll go with this. And I was supposed to leave a little gap. Right. All right, so folding it over, leaving a little gap. So we want it up close to the line, but not on it. Okay, and then the other side in, again, leaving a gap. I'm going to slip the swivel clasp on, kind of get it in the middle. I'm going to fold it in half, putting the short ends together. This is why we weren't supposed to open the tape yet, is it's going to make this a little harder. So I'm going to clip those. So clip along the short edge, and then I'm going to stitch across at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Okay. 
All right, holding my threads to the back, I'm going to stitch it on with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And I'm on a three and a half stitch length, so I'm joining. All right, I'm going to uh, get my scissors. I'm going to take a bit off either side on an angle towards the center. This just helps reduce the bulk a bit. I'm going to grab my double-sided tape, open up this seam, butterfly this seam, double-sided tape across it, take the paper off the double-sided tape, and fold the outside into the center keeping it the same distance away from the center as all the way around the rest of it. All right, now I'm going to fold it again on itself. And I'm going to clip. Moving the swivel hook out of the way as I go. All right, I'm going to start stitching around the open side to close it, an eighth of an inch seam allowance number five stitch length. And I'm actually gonna start right around the joint, just off, just this side of the joint. And now the last step of um, making this wristlet, we're going to mark, a, mark, actually I'm gonna finish singeing the threads. I'm gonna fold it over and I'm going to mark a spot on this side of the wrist strap. Let's see, what does a half inch look like? So about a half of an inch, centered about half of an inch away from the swivel hook. I'm gonna use my, this one is my hole punch. So I've got my hole punch die in this. So punch a hole. Need that one to go a little bit more. Got my rivet. I'm gonna put the post in from one side. Hopefully this is long enough. So I put the post in one side, push it down around the post, put the cap on the other side. Now I'm gonna move my hole punch out of the way. And I'm gonna use my, my rivet press. I'm going to seat it down. So in this part, this is concave. And I'm going to seat it down in that and press from the other side. There we go. There we go. Got the strap. 
clip it on to the D-ring. And there we have, if it'll stand up. <laughs> yeah, there we have the, there we have the Beachcomber Clutch. Thank you.